Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 10, lecture number 39, today we will discuss about water recycling. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include water recycling uses, benefits, water management solutions, water recycling treatments, primary treatment, secondary treatment, tertiary treatment, conventional and modern techniques. Keywords for today's lecture water recycling and wastewater treatments. So, as we are discussing in the last lecture, so this water conservation is very important as far as the water management in a watershed basis in a watershed is considered or in a, in a, in a district or in a city is considered we have to look say which way we can go for uh, water conservation. So, that is one aspect the conservation is one aspect and then still uh, we, we may have lot of uh, water stress or uh, say, say water scarcity in many areas. So, then uh, especially in urban areas say where uh, say we, uh, we need a huge amount of water for um, say domestic industrial and other purposes, but availability is much much less. So, there say other than water conservation. I mean by reducing the amount of use of water and the most efficient way utilization. So, that is what as we discussed in the last lecture about the water conservation, but uh, say especially in urban areas we can go for uh, water recycling. Uh, so, water recycling is mainly say uh, we can give some treatment to the to the wastewater or the effluents generated uh, from the particular domestic or the, the industrial or whichever sector we consider and then uh, say we can use for uh, other purposes. So, that is the, the in a general way what we can define as uh, water re recycling. So, other than water conservation we have to go for water recycling. So, that um, the water stress or the non availability of water we can sort it out uh, in certain uh, certain way. So, when we discuss about the water recycling. So, as I mentioned uh, water recycling is reusing treated wastewater for beneficial purposes such as agricultural and landscape irrigation, industrial processes, toilet flushing and uh, groundwater recharge. So, that way say for example, if you consider a domestic purpose is concerned see if this is a residential building then we can see that the, the water coming from the, the, the sinks we can separate it and then give uh, some uh, treatments uh, like um, uh, say um, preliminary or primary treatment and then we can directly uh, use for uh, say um, uh, irrigation like this. And then say for example, the water coming from the toilets also we can do some kinds of say, through it can be passed through a septic tank uh, or it can be given some treatment and then directly uh, use for other purposes. So, that way uh, say a common uh, type of recycled water is water that has been reclaimed from uh, say the waste water or sewage. So, it can be say either from the industrial sources or it can be from the domestic sources or as such the, the municipal waste water. So, uh, as we can see that when we look into the, the hydraulic cycle actually the nature is also doing the same. So, through the natural water cycle the earth has recycled and uh, uh, reused the water for uh, say millions or billions of years. So, so the, the, the water is coming as precipitation and then it uh, goes through a, a, a the hydraulic cycle and finally, it is evaporated and then finally again coming back as, as rainfall. So, the nature is also doing in one way or another way of uh, uh, natural uh, water recycling, uh, but uh, say uh, say as far as the the in terms of water recycling here what we are discussing is what way uh, we can um, uh, say give some treatment and reuse for uh, various purposes either for agricultural, industrial, domestic or other kinds of uh, purposes. So, that is the uh, in terms of water recycling. So, when we look into water recycling. so we can see that when we uh, we critically analyze the water recycling. So, actually uh, it offers uh, the, the resources as water as a resource and then that way we can see that uh, lot of financial savings uh, we can obtain uh, through the, the, the water recycling. So, uh, the advantage is that um, the wastewater treatments uh, say we can tailor uh, made to um, meet the water quality requirements of planned reuse. So, say for example, if we are going to use the 
uh, waste water for say, uh, say irrigation or the agriculture purposes. So, it may be, we do not have to give for complete treatment may be a preliminary or primary treatment or secondary treatment may be sufficient depending upon the, the quality of the, uh, the waste water. So, then uh, say recycled water for landscape irrigation say for example, requires less treatments than recycled water for uh, say for uh, domestic or drinking purposes. So, if you are planning to use, uh, say for example, drinking then we have to go for uh, entire cycles of treatment like uh, um, you know, preliminary, primary, secondary and tertiary treatment and uh, even uh, say um, uh, reverse osmosis. So, that kind of treatment is required if you are going to use for drinking, but for other purposes like an uh, irrigation or the the uh, the industrial uh, uh, reuses the, the that we, we do not have to give that much uh, treatment. So, that way we can see that we can save water. So, that way we get the financial savings and then also we can reduce the the amount of waste water to be treated for various purposes. So, uh, that way when we look into water recycling, so water is sometimes recycled and uh, reused on site. So, so, that means in an industrial site there itself we can uh, simply um, say, uh, uh, say uh, give some treatments and directly utilize. So, industrial facility recycles water for cooling pro processes. And then another type of um, the recycled water is water that can be uh, reclaimed from municipal waste water or sewage. So, we can see that uh, as far as the municipal waste water is concerned the, the water um, the waste water is collected from various sources and then the, the, the it will be totally heterogeneous type of uh, waste water and then again that also uh, we can give some treatments and then uh, say uh, reuse. Uh, so, that way we can see that grey water or uh, grey water is say a reusable waste water from residential, commercial and industrial bathroom, sinks, bath, uh, bathtub, shower drains, uh, cloth washing, equipment drains uh, etcetera. So, the, the waste water we can collect from various sources and then uh, actually when we deal with the municipal uh, waste water it will be mix of many of these things and then uh, we have to give appropriate uh, treatments uh, before uh, uh, we reuse for the uh, intended uh, purposes. So, grey water say reused on site say for example, for landscape uh, irrigation uh, like that. So, that way uh, when we look into uh, water recycling, uh, say, uh, say uh, it depends upon the, the, the quality of the waste water and then uh, say what grade of treatment we have to give to that waste water and then what purpose uh, we are going to use that treated water. So, accordingly uh, say we have to give appropriate treatments and then appropriate use uh, we have to identify as far as the, the waste water is concerned. So, uh, when we look into literature we can see that the recycling recycled water we can uh, use for uh, different purposes. So, um, uh, even though with uh, uh, say uh, 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 complete set of treatment starting from primary, secondary to um, tertiary and uh, uh, treatment like um, uh, say ultraviolet or the, the re reverse osmosis type of treatment we can use for uh, portable purposes. But uh, say when we look into literature we can see that the uh, recycled water is very rarely used for portable purposes only say in some cases where uh, totally fresh water is not at all available. So, we can see that the, the recycled water is not, uh, not generally used for portable purposes, uh, but used for uh, non-portable purposes. So, some of the important uh, non-portable purposes uh, here I have uh, uh, listed uh, like uh, agricultural. So, we can use for irrigation. So, only thing is that um, if say the, the particular product we are directly using for um, the, the, uh, the um, consumption, human consumption or the uh, say raw vegetables like that, then uh, we have to give a say better treatment as far as the waste water is concerned. Otherwise, there is possibility of um, uh, contamination even of the, the vegetables or fruits. Uh, so, that way depending upon the, the purpose of uh, irrigation, we can give appropriate treatments. So, agriculture, landscape, public parks, uh, golf course irrigation, cooling water for power plants and uh, oil refineries, uh, then uh, processing uh, water for mills, plants, uh, then uh, the, the uh, recycled water can be used for toilet flushing, uh, then uh, we can use the recycled water for dust control, uh, construction activities, corn gate mixing, then we can uh, 
how artificial lakes by using the, the recycled water. Um, and then uh, say as I mentioned if we are going to use for portable purpose we have to give appropriate um, uh, uh, treatment to the, the waste water. Uh, so, uh, say nowadays um, in some of the arid and uh, semi arid uh, regions the uh, recycled water is used to, to recharge uh, ground water aquifers and then augmenting surface water reservoirs. But this is uh, after going through a series of um, uh, treatment to the, the waste water so that a good quality uh, uh, recycled water is obtained and that can be uh, used for uh, say even to recharge ground water uh, aquifers or augment the uh, surface water uh, reservoirs. So, that way when we look into the, the, re, the recycling processes, so as I mentioned we have to see uh, say the, the grade of the waste water and then uh, we have to see what kind of treatments we have to give and then uh, what is our intended uh, um, purpose of uh, the, the recycled water. So, now uh, uh, within this perspective let us look uh, what are the important benefits as far as uh, water recycling is concerned. So, some of the important uh, benefits I have listed here. So, like uh, reduction of treated waste water discharge to sensitive or impaired surface waters, then reduction of imported water and avoided um, um, uh, costs associated with uh, importing water. So, we can uh, say recycle the water, give appropriate treatment so that we do not have to import water. Uh, for various uh, purposes. Then uh, environmental benefits, uh, so that way we can see that um, uh, when we are not using the fresh water, we are giving appropriate treatment to the waste water and then we are re reusing it. So, that way uh, we can see that um, uh, we can achieve sustainable water resource management as far as the, the, the uh, environment is concerned. Then recycled water can also be used to create or enhanced wetlands and riparian uh, habitats. So, we can uh, have uh, say use this uh, waste water treated uh, recycled waste water uh, uh, say especially to uh, recycle water to wetlands, we can uh, discharge wetlands and then uh, that can be that uh, say uh, some way of um, cleaning process will be taking place within the wetlands itself. Then uh, conservation of other resources besides water like um, say we can remove um, uh, chromium from the uh, leather industry, then reuse at um, little extra cost. So, only some say depending upon the use say for example, the water which we are use going to use for flushing in domestic sector or the water we are using for cooling purposes. So, we do not need a uh, very high quality water. So, that way with some minimum treatments uh, we can uh, use the, the water again. So, 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 that way we can reuse at little extra cost. Then savings on water abstraction <coughs> cost. So, um, uh, say if we can reuse the waste water uh, or the, the uh, recycled water, uh, then uh, we can see that instead of pumping water from the, the uh, uh, deeper aquifer systems, so we can uh, save uh, cost of abstraction or the cost of um, the, the power cost we can uh, reduce. So, then reduce dependence of vagaries of river flows, um, then uh, gaining tax advantages in arid and designated zones then reduction in effluent uh, discharge volume. So, when we are um, um, say gives, uh, when we are treating the waste water and then when we are using the recycled water actually we are reducing the, the volume of the um, waste water. So, that way uh, the, the, the say before discharging this effluent to the, the river or a lake. So, then we do not have to um, we will not have much volume that we have to give appropriate treatment. So, that way we can reduce the uh, the effluence that which is to be discharged um, uh, say to rivers, lakes or the sea. So, these are some of the important benefits as far as water recycling is uh, concerned. So, now uh, say uh, within this perspective, so we were discussing about uh, what is um, uh, say um, uh, water recycling and then um, how we have to do this and then what are its uh, benefits uh, like that. So, now when we look into overall water management solutions uh, say within a watershed or within a particular area or within a within an urban environment is concerned say we can go for um, various solutions. So, uh, here let us discuss say what are the possible solutions. So, water management solutions. So, as I mentioned earlier, so uh, we have got water stress so, so that we can 
uh, indicate in terms of water stress index. So, actually this is an annual renewable water resource uh, per, cap, uh, per capita that are available to meet uh, needs for uh, domestic, industrial, agriculture and other purposes. So, uh, say we, we can uh, come up with an index uh, called water stress index for the particular area uh, based upon the, the availability of water based upon the various uses. So, depending upon the supply and demand we can come up with a water stress index. Uh, so, this is one of the commonly used approach to evaluate uh, water availability. So, as we were discussing earlier also about two third of the world population will be under moderate to high water stress according to the projection that to uh, predict in 2025 and then 50 percent of the population will face constraints as far as water supply is concerned. So, that way this water recycling is um, uh, say one important solution that we can look into. So, when we look into water management solutions say within the perspective water stress index um, uh, we can have um, uh, say we can um, go for water water uh, say uh, water management solutions are concerned we can go for surface water management solutions drainage and waste water management solutions, polluted water management then water recycling uh, management. So, like that uh, uh, we can uh, classify into four as far as water management solutions as far as a particular watershed or particular area is concerned. So, now if you look into surface water management solutions, so uh, that what we are trying to do is say with respect to the available surface water uh, say in terms of say uh, water available in a particular area or particular watershed or particular ur urban area say in terms of water available in, uh, in, in lakes, rivers or the, the ponds or whatever surface water uh, available. So, we have to give appropriate um, uh, treatments uh, say and then uh, use uh, so, so for the uh, or the we go for beneficial uh, use. So, that way some of the things what are generally used to give appropriate treatment for surface water include modular uh, water storage units permeable geotextiles, silt traps, vortex uh, flow controls. So, modular uh, water storage units means say we can have systems like um, polystorm from uh, polypipe uh, lightweight cells um, uh, with a um, uh, high void ratio. So, applications include rainwater, soak waste or storm water attenuation. So, this we can uh, say, say we can give appropriate treatment for rain water or the storm water and then uh, we can use for various purposes. Then as far as permeable geotextiles are concerned this is in conjunction with um, modular storage units uh, say just like rain water soak ways then a tape and wrap package for self installation uh, for low, low risk areas like that. And then third one is especially used for storm water system silt traps. So, here uh, we intercept the silt and the small objects from water drainage systems then situated upstream of the modular water storage units. So, that is uh, say what uh, how we can use silt traps. Then uh, vortex uh, flow controls. So, this is used with the storm water attenuation system uh, to ensure continue uh, to, to ensure optimum designated water flow rates at discharge outlet by utilizing an internal vortex. Um, uh, makes them more efficient. So, like that uh, same available same from rain water or storm water uh, as a surface water source uh, we can give appropriate treatments uh, and that recycled water we can use uh, for the uh, particular use like uh, either uh, domestic or the agricultural uh, or other industrial uh, purposes. Then uh, now uh, second one is uh, drainage and wastewater management. Uh, so, here um, say uh, the water say which we are draining that we are trying to use effectively. So, we can have uh, pumping stations say for example, for small applications like um, packaged uh, uh, tank and pump systems uh, <coughs> designed to lift small quantities of uh, wastewater to reach existing drain or sewer. And then we can have pumping stations say for example, for large applications like a package or chamber and uh, uh, pump systems uh, to lift large quantities of waste water to reach existing drain or sewer. Then uh, sewage treatment plants like um, uh, designed for use where septic tank is either um, impractical and a connection to the ma main sewer is impossible. 
Uh, then we can have systems like uh, grease traps and separators were primarily used in uh, catering and uh, uh, commercial premises then to prevent vast amounts of grease uh, animal fats and oils from entering and solidifying in the drainage systems. So, what we are trying to say these are various systems which we can uh, use say as, per, as a drainage um, uh, water. So, the drained water we can directly uh, say after through this treatment we can use for uh, as a uh, various purpose as a uh, recycled uh, water. And then third uh, solution is polluted water management solution. So, here uh, say we are uh, we are uh, we can have bypass separators uh, like designed to intercept oil, uh, petrol and silt from uh, lightly contaminated surface water drainage systems. And then uh, like uh, full retention separators um, say uh, like to intercept oil, petrol, silt from heavily contaminated surface water drainage systems in high risk areas. And then treating the full flow that can be generated from the catchment area through the, the drainage systems. So, like that what we are trying to show here say somewhat polluted water say we give uh, uh, say various type of uh, treatments and then recycle uh, or we are planning to use for uh, particular uh, purpose uh, depending upon the quality of the water. And then finally, say fourth one is the water recycling management solutions. So, this is what is actually uh, we will be discussing in detail. So, here the grey water um, th this is actually the grey water recovery systems uh, say for domestic or industrial or commercial applications. Uh, so, here uh, we can use the recycled water say uh, in combination with the rainwater harvesting say as far as domestic applications are concerned and then we can capture treat and store uh, lightly soiled water used within a drilling in a, in a residential area or we can uh, reuse uh, the uh, around the house for supplying water to flush toilets, uh, wash clothes or uh, water uh, say uh, the garden. Uh, so, like that we can use the grey water recovery systems say for domestic applications. And then uh, next one is grey water recovery systems for industrial and commercial applications. So, here um, say um, the, the uh, recycled water is used in combination with the rainwater harvesting also. Uh, we can capture, treat and store uh, lightly soiled water. So, that, so that we can give with uh, some mild treatments uh, we can use for the intended purpose. Then we are reused for supplying water to flush toilets, wash clothes or uh, water fields. Uh, then uh, sports grounds or gardens uh, like that. So, that way uh, we can have either uh, the domestic applications, industrial applications and commercial applications. So, uh, only as I mentioned earlier depending upon the quality of the, the uh, water, uh, waste water we give appropriate treatments and that recycled water is used for either domestic, industrial or uh, commercial or agricultural uh, applications. So, that way uh, when we look into water recycling, uh, say, uh, say we can uh, say go for uh, say uh, different types of treatments and then according to the treatments uh, we can uh, uh, use for a particular uh, type of use. So, uh, if, we, if we are having the waste water, so first one is uh, we have to collect the waste water and then uh, we can uh, give some preliminary treatment like solid waste, uh, so floating solids all these things we can remove. And then next one is primary treatment. So, there uh, say like sedimentation we can retain the water for uh, some time in um, uh, say uh, tanks or pits like that. Uh, so, that the, the floating materials and other things will be settled down. So, this is so called a sedimentation process. So, actually uh, this simple treatment is not sufficient for any kind of uh, reuse. If the uh, water is totally polluted then we have to go for further treatment. But if it is simple uh, say water coming from a, a kitchen or like that then even after primary treatment we can uh, use the, the recycled water for uh, say uh, gardening or irrigation uh, purpose. Then uh, from the primary treatments, uh, the, the water is take, uh, going to secondary treatments. So, there uh, we can go for uh, various treatments like biological oxidation or disinfection uh, kind of treatment. So, actually after secondary treatment, uh, we can uh, use the, the recycled water for various purposes like um, uh, surface irrigation say for example, non-food crop 
then uh, uh, say a restricted landscape. So, we can use the water for uh, say uh, to irrigate um, uh, grass or the landscaping, then it can be put to wetlands uh, where further um, uh, kinds of treatment will be taking place and then uh, wildlife habitat, then uh, stream augmentation. Uh, then uh, same depending upon the quality of the water we can uh, go for industrial cooling so like that so this is about the secondary treatment so after the secondary treatments the water can be sent to the tertiary or advanced treatments there we will be giving detailed treatment with respect to the chemical uh, say like a chemical co coagulation filtration uh, disinfection like that so, actually the water, the water coming from after this treatment is somewhat uh, pure water to certain extent. So, this water we can um, uh, use for say landscape, golf course uh, irrigation, uh, then toilet flushing, vehicle washing, uh, food crop irrigation, unrestricted, unrestricted recreation environment. So, like that uh, we can use this water for uh, various purposes. And then if you are going to uh, use the, the recycled water for uh, say drinking or portable purposes, then uh, we can uh, say, uh, say, uh, have some more treatment like um, um, say uh, reverse osmosis kinds of treatment or the, the ultraviolet um, disinfection treatments. And this water um, say uh, so directly say using for portable we can uh, use for ground water recharge. Uh, and then surface water reservoir augmentation like that. So, uh, like this when we are looking to the, the uh, waste water say uh, for as far as water recycling is concerned, uh, we have to uh, go through a, 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 a say system, systematic treatments depending upon the, the nature of the waste water and depending upon the, the use for which uh, uh, we are going to put this um, recycled water. So, accordingly appropriate treatment will be given and will be uh, reused. So, now further let us uh, discuss somewhat in detail about this various stages of uh, waste water treatment say for recycling purposes. So, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier depending upon the waste water nature we can give appropriate treatments uh, before recycling. So, um, first one is the preliminary treatments. So, there uh, say we can remove the heavy solids like wood, rags and uh, grit etcetera. So, this um, we can put the waste water, we can pass it the water um, thringling waste water through a screen with the bars of 20 to 50 m uh, apart. So, that all the, the woods, racks etcetera will be captured. So, that is so called preliminary treatments. Then the water will be sent to primary treatments. So, uh, here uh, we will slow the waste water the flow rate and settlement chambers or sedimentation tanks we can use. So, uh, in domestic situation septic tank can be used as a settlement chamber, then uh, which may remove about 30 to 50 percent of the BOD and suspended solid. So, primary treatment to certain extent we can remove say um, most of the, the um, floating materials, sediments and all those kinds of things and even some of the BOD also we can uh, remove through uh, primary treatment. Then next one is the secondary treatment. So, here uh, we can go for various kinds of treatments uh, like um, biological treatments say for example, to remove the microorganisms uh, and remove the remaining BOD and suspended solids. Uh, so, here um, during later stages of secondary treatment the nitrification processes like um, an ammonia present in wa waste water is transformed into nitrate. So, like that we can go for a series of uh, secondary treatments. Uh, and uh, as we have seen in the previous slide this after secondary treatments uh, the, the, the uh, water may be used for purposes like uh, uh, irrigation uh, or um, say uh, golf course uh, irrigation or landscaping uh, like that. Then tertiary treatment is actually this involves taking the waste water through a further biological, physical or chemical step. So, here uh, further we try to remove the BOD, suspended solids, nitrogen, phosphorus and pathogens in the tertiary treatments. Uh, so, we can also uh, provide uh, say like natural systems like uh, wetlands or ponds and lagoons and then uh, where say if land is available. So, that will be say the water will be uh, detained for long time and then 
either aerobic or anaerobic kinds of say treatment will be um, taking place in this kinds of uh, system. So, that is about the uh, tertiary treatment. So, when we look into tertiary treatment actually say when we look into the, the waste water so the tertiary through to after the tertiary treatment the, the water can be used for uh, various purposes uh, uh, say reuse is concerned or recycle after the recycling uh, through the tertiary treatment we can directly utilize like for irrigation and uh, then uh, say toilet flushing or direct industrial purpose like that. So, tertiary treatment for uh, industrial reuse is usually done by using mechanized or physico chemical processes such as say, some of the important tertiary treatments I have listed here like activated uh, carbon treatment. So, we can pass the, pass the uh, secondary treated waste water through activated carbon uh, so that uh, most of the contaminants will be removed. Then chemical oxi oxidation and other advanced oxidation processes then multimedia filtration then softening uh, like lime soda adding lime soda or, or passing through CO light. So, this is actually mainly for industrial purpose then a demineralization say like ion exchange pro, uh, processes then disinfection like by adding uh, um, chlorine hypochlorine ozone or ultraviolet um, systems or then uh, we can put the the waste the waste water through for membrane processes like uh, microfiltration ultrafiltration uh, and then the the latest is the, the reverse osmosis so, depending upon the type of use, uh, so we can choose particular type of tertiary treatments and then um, uh, uh, directly from that treatment we can use the, the uh, water or we can recycle the uh, water. So, that way when we look into the tertiary treatments, uh, so we can classify the, the, the treatment method into uh, the, the biological methods and uh, physical chemical method as far as physical chemical method is concerned uh, like um, screen grit removal sedimentation filtration etc so these are all physical chemical methods then biological method is concerned uh, we can consider the treatment uh, with uh, with uh, within the percent of ox with uh, the presence of oxygen or so called aerobic methods and then anaerobic methods so uh, say without oxygen and so that way some of the anaerobic methods include contact birds sludge digesters etc then aerobic methods um, uh, say we can again classify into suspended growth or attached growth so suspended growth say systems like um, activated sludges aerated lagoons etc we can utilize then um, uh, same uh, the attached growth is concerned we can go for trickling filter land treatments etc so uh, when we discuss the tertiary treatments uh, we we have a series of treatment methodologies uh, number of methodologies are available so depending upon the the type of waste water or depending upon the quality of the the, the components of the waste water uh, we choose particular type of um, treatments and then that also depends upon the intended uh, reuse so what kind of whether we are going to use the recycled water for um, say domestic purposes or industrial purposes or agriculture purposes so accordingly we can choose particular type of treatment systems uh, so that um, say we have to see that the the economics uh, also i mean the benefit cost ratio also we have to see and when we um, say put the the waste water through such treatments so now let us look into some of the important methods of treating the waste water so the 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 waste water treatment is concerned we can classify into uh, conventional way, way of treating waste water and then the modern techniques as far as waste water treatment is concerned so some of the the treatment techniques are briefly mentioned here first one is say cesspools so this this is mainly we are using for containment uh, say to get it is generally decentralized uh, uh, way of treatment. So, a cesspool is a big uh, tank of um, uh, at least 18 cubic meter size uh, it has an inlet but no outlet. So, we do not treat waste water here but to store it until it is removed by a sludge tank uh, so that it will be taken for further treatment to some other location. So, it is a temporary uh, storage. So, due to the environmental pollution especially to ground water so, the, it is not preferred in urban environment. So, uh, say we have to we, we should keep the waste water in a in a very good container otherwise if it is leaked into the uh, 
uh, the soil then the ground water will be affected. And then second one is septic tanks. So, actually this is a primary treatment and it can be also decentralized. So, to septic tanks have we have both an inlet and outlet and this is much smaller and uh, suitable for small scale wastewater treatments and that can be adopted for domestic uh, uh, say like uh, household purpose or the so housing societies or hotels uh, like that. And this provide primary treatment and should be followed by a soak pit or leach field so that um, uh, one, one more treatment is required. So, septic tank is also a conventional way of treating the uh, waste water. Then uh, third one is leach fields or uh, actually this can be secondary or tertiary and um, uh, dispersal or it can be also centralized system or decentralized system. So, here uh, same uh, it is generally a last stage of a conventional treatment system. So, this is preceded by septic tank and uh, uh, this combination is often uh, referred to as septic tank system. So, a leach field is a series of perforated pipes surrounded by gravity that run uh, in underground uh, trenches. So, uh, this uh, through this uh, say we get somewhat treated uh, 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 waste water. And then the next one is uh, waste stabilization ponds. So, this can be all stages possible like um, secondary tertiary, then uh, it can be either centralized system or decentralized system. So, like a solar ponds, settlement ponds, lagoons or sewage ponds uh, with a small uh, anaerobic ponds um, uh, in, the, in the beginning followed by large aerobic ponds. So, the, what the waste water go through a series of ponds and then finally, we will be getting somewhat uh, treated water. So, this um, same generally this kinds of stabilization pond will be placed in, in tandem with um, reed beds. Uh, so, that is making system more attractive and uh, larger. So, in the, in the, in the one of the limitations we need large surface area to have this kinds of uh, waste stabilization uh, ponds. Then uh, the, the other kinds of um, say uh, um, the conventional treatment include like constructed wetlands. So, this also can be centralized or decentralized systems. So, constructed wetlands actually this is a human made wetland designed to closely imitate the treatment functions that occur in a natural wetlands. So, just like a, what is happening within an ecosystem. So, there will be some specific type of plants will be there in the system that absorb many of the, the contamination contaminants within the wastewater and then uh, the water will be detained for, the wastewater will be detained for some time and the uh, and that will be going through a, a natural processes. And then um, this will be operating on in an ambient solar energy and require low external energy uh, input. So, that way the waste water will be passing through the system uh, for some time and then and the we will be getting uh, somewhat uh, treated water. And then other conventional techniques like uh, duckweed ponds. So, this can be also centralized or decentralized system. So, this is some green colored uh, small plants which grows in sewage ho holding ponds. So, this is uh, this plants will be absorbing all this uh, some of the uh, waste material within the water and then uh, that will become a field for the, the plants. So, this field on the organic elements in the waste water for growth for the treatment of um, uh, low strength community waste water this can be used and duckweeds help in removing nutrients and heavy metals uh, by absorbing uh, components like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and uh, tracer uh, trace elements uh, like that. So, this is uh, another conventional uh, treatment technique uh, so, uh, as far as water recycling is uh, concerned. Then uh, another one is so called trickling filter. So, this is actually used for secondary or tertiary treatment. So, trickling filters are always preceded by a primary settlement uh, storage usually a septic tank and followed by a humus tank and they are also known as percolating filters, biological filter and filter beds. Then a trickling filter is a container usually filled with um, uh, blast furnace clinger or stones called as uh, media and then uh, the waste water will be pass, uh, passing through that and then uh, many of the, the uh, waste material will be absorbed. Sewage is um, distributed over the surface of the media and drains freely to the base. The method is relatively robust tolerant of peak loadings and does not require power if a fall is available. So, that way uh, this trickling filter is one of the best um, uh, conventional way of uh, treating the waste water.
water and uh, uh, that treated waste water can be recycled or can be used as a recycled water for uh, say uh, various purposes like uh, agriculture. Then uh, say let us now look into some of the modern techniques uh, used for treating the waste water. So, this is mainly say we use say as tertiary um, treatments. Uh, so, first one is the upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor or UASBR. So, here treatment plants uh, say we can uh, uh, say actually uh, as module it will be available and directly it can be obtained from the shops and can be assembled. A sludge blanket um, cultured in the lower portion of the UASBR uh, very effectively traps suspended and dissolved organic matter. Then we can have rotating bio disc conductor uh, say second unit in the series and takes the uh, atmospheric oxygen and then an attached uh, growth uh, anoxic reactor is built into the upper portion of the USBR for conversion of nitrates and nitrates uh, into nitrogen gas. And then entire operational is operation is simple and system once stabilized can be left to itself without. Uh, much human intervention. So, once it is stabilized we have to only pass the waste water through the system and then uh, the system will be keep on uh, working. So, treated water may be used in a say, say it will be somewhat um, uh, good quality wa say uh, water. So, that can be used for irrigation purpose depending upon the uh, nature of the uh, waste water. So, that is about the uh, UASBR. Then another one is another modern technique is called uh, cyclic activated sludge process or CTEC. So, here uh, say uh, the cyclic activated waste water treatment process actually we pass through the water through um, activated car carbon. So, carbon oxidation, nitrification, uh, denitrification, biophosphorus removal all are carried out simultaneously as far as the CTEC is concerned. And this technique ensures that all the effluent process like uh, equalization, aeration, settling and decanting carried out in a single uh, time. So, this is a, a very systematic uh, uh, modern system. So, where we can directly uh, get a better quality water and then uh, this treats the effluent to a level specified by authorities for irrigation or discharge into open water sources like rivers. So, th so, through this cyclic activated carbon process uh, we can achieve say the BOD can be less than 30 milligram per liter, COD can be less than 150 milligram per liter and ammonia nitrate can be less than 5 milligram per liter like that. So, like that we can achieve um, uh, say better quality um, uh, water through when the waste water is going, going through the, the CTEC um, um, technique. So, the technology is automatic and found to be uh, very economical. So, for small scale industries this technique is uh, very useful for the treatment of the, the waste water. Uh, so, that way we can see that um, uh, say this either CTEC or the uh, USBR. So, like that this kinds of modern techniques are uh, very effective and then uh, it occupies much much smaller space and then for a small industrial unit um, uh, in an area we can directly they can buy it and put it in operation mode. And then uh, as far as the modern techniques are concerned the most important technique is so called the membrane processes. So, here we will be passing the waste water through the membranes and then uh, that will be capturing most of the, the contaminants uh, within the waste water. So, that we will get a better quality uh, water. So, the membrane process actually the membranes are semi permeable material designed to separate particulates colloidal and dissolved uh, substances from liquid solutes or the waste water. Then uh, this uh, membranes allows substances smaller than the membranes pores to flow through while holding back substances larger, the, larger than the pores. So, depending upon the requirement we can have uh, say micro filters or nano filters like that. So, membranes produced from a variety of materials we can use for such purposes uh, like um, cellulose, uh, acetate and uh, polyamides, then uh, polysulfones and then uh, po poly propylene, nylon, polyvinyl, alcohol etcetera. So, various kinds of membranes are available nowadays in market. Uh, so, the four most common configurations are like uh, we can keep the configuration tubular form, plate and frame, uh, spiral wound and uh, hollow fiber. So, like that depending upon what kind of design we are doing 
as far as the membrane process are concerned and depending upon the type of membrane uh, we can have the particular system. Uh, so, as far as the membrane process are concerned actually we can classify uh, this into uh, four uh, categories. First one is the uh, micro filtration. So, this, this categorization is according to the size of the, uh, the, the membrane. So, micro filtration uh, membranes so actually pores will be uh, greater than 50 nanometers are the least expensive membranes and this we can use in waste water treatment for turbidity removal of solids uh, separation after biological treatments and then this also can be we can use in membrane bioreactors and this can be used for removal of helminth or other organisms etc from the the waste water so microfiltration when the pores the mem membrane pores are greater than 50 nano meter so we that kind of um, mem membrane when we use that is called microfiltration second one is so called ultra filtration uh, so ultra filtration means uh, the ultra filtration membranes the pore size will be varying from uh, 2 to 50 uh, nano microns or nanometer, uh, 50 uh, nanometers uh, have been used in waste water treatment for many of the uh, same applications as um, microfilter membranes except that uh, ultra, ultra filtration scheme systems will give a better separation of finer colloids, bacteria, virus, etcetera. So, when the waste water is passed through the ultra filtration systems, so uh, other than the, the colloids and uh, the, the so, so, sediments all these things we can also remove the bacteria, viruses etcetera from the, the waste water. So, this water available from the ultra filtration will be uh, much better than what is from the uh, micro filtration. And the third system is so called uh, nano filtration. So, here in nano filtration membranes the pores uh, should be less than 2 uh, nanometers. Uh, so, the pressure the pressures vary between 520 to uh, 1400 kilopascal and flux rates vary from 200 to 800 liters per meter square per day and this uh, the, the water passing through the nano filtration we can directly use for uh, even for portable purposes uh, like recharging or other kinds of uh, purposes. Then the ultimate uh, say filter technique is by using the, the, the technique is called a reverse osmosis. So, here uh, the, the membranes um, uh, so, so pores will be much smaller than 2 nanometer and have the lowest molecular weight cutoff and then high operating pressures of more than 1400 kilopascal and flux rates vary from 300 to 500 uh, liters per meter square per day. So, this is uh, say actually even uh, say the, uh, we are uh, reverse osmosis one of the commonly used technique say as far as the desalination plants are concerned. And uh, the re reverse osmosis in further treating uh, pre treated uh, say from micro filtration or ultra filtration to produce water of high quality for indirect reuse applications. So, even say for example, if the water is not available in particular area, we can uh, the, pa what the, the water passing through reverse osmosis systems we can directly even utilize or we can use for um, the, the, uh, the recharge to the aquifer systems uh, like that. And then uh, one more uh, say modern techniques like ultraviolet uh, disinfection. So, where we can remove all the, the pathogens, bacteria, viruses, etcetera from the, the, the recycled water and then directly we can use for the intended use. So, like this we can see that um, say depending upon the, the use what we are considering. So, depending upon the quality of the, the waste water we go for a particular type of uh, say treatments and then we can directly uh, say uh, uh, use for the intended use depending upon the uh, treatments uh, given. So, before closing today's lecture let us uh, say have an overview of the water recycling practices. So, water recycling is a growing practice in many regions of the world including uh, USA, Europe, India, Australia, Israel, etc. So, especially in countries like uh, Israel, Australia where water scarcity is there, they, they, it, this uh, water recycling is very common um, in many of the areas. Uh, say as far as US is concerned about 13 uh, million meter cube per day is recycled and reused and a small fraction of total volume uh, waste water generated actually this is a small fraction out of the 140 million meter cube per day only about 10 percent of waste water is recycled and suggesting the potential of recycling. 
and recycled water use on a volume basis uh, is growing at an uh, estimated 15 percent per year in the United States. And all evidences suggest that water recycling will play major role in the water management in the 21st century. So, this um, water recycling practice are increasing in many of their especially industries concerned they are looking for zero liquid discharge that means no waste water from the, the system. So, that way uh, say many of the industries are now adopting the water recycling. Uh, in the United States for example, um, at a compound annual growth rate of 15 percent, the volume of recycled water would be about 45 to 50 million meter cube per day uh, in another um, 5 to 10 years. So, like that so the, the system is growing and the water recycling is becoming uh, very common. As far as water recycling in India is concerned, um, say in India not much uh, recycling is done. Uh, but now industries are picking especially industrial sector the recycling uh, is uh, coming up like anything. Uh, so, in India some of the methodologies adopted as far as recycling is concerned, water recycling is concerned like uh, plain water conservation, reuse without any treatments, uh, reuse after treatment using on site toilet waters and uh, some easily treated industrial waste waters, then uh, reuse after treatment using off site sources of municipal waste water. Then uh, say a study of the reuse of waste water in India shows that the reuse has achieved um, in affordable cost and some industries have in fact saved the money by reusing their waste water. So, many examples are there say where their money is um, uh, the whatever the money invested uh, say in waste water treatment or water recycling they have got back in few years time and then they are saving money as far as water recycling and reuse is concerned. So, in India the water recycling has uh, first begun say in Mumbai say in 1964 and 65 especially by textile industry at that time water availability was much less to Mumbai region. So, that way the textile industry started this uh, showing that about 15 20 percent of the water can be recycled without any pretreatment especially in textile industries and cost of providing direct reuse was relatively small. Then uh, cost benefit ratio is high and cost recovery periods is uh, say within 2 or 3 years. Then the recycling was carried out in as many as 22 mills in uh, 70s and 80s uh, in Mumbai and later a few more industries started recycling. A typical treatment scheme say for example, say if you consider toilet water is as follows the so waste water. So, first it will be screened then extended aeration will be given chemical dosing plus flocculation will be done then sand filtration, then zeolite softening plus acid correction, occasional chlorine shock loss, then make up water say for example, using for cooling towers. Uh, so, then uh, remaining sludge and other waste water will be returned to sewer line. So, like that it will be going through a systematic process depending upon the, the, the waste water and then depending upon the uh, intended uh, use. So, now uh, before closing today's lecture let us see uh, let us discuss two small uh, cases where the water recycling is uh, practiced for last um, uh, few years in Mumbai say for example, first industry is Oswal Agro Union Garbage Plant Chembur Mumbai. So, here they have given tra tertiary treatment uh, this is built up this is actually a very old plant say about um, uh, say um, uh, 40 years of say actually this plant is there. So, for sewage treatment reclamation with a capacity 5 to 10 million liters per day raw sewage was obtained from municipal corporation uh, as far as this industry is concerned and so being uh, using the, the waste water from municipal corporation which is a dependable source of water. A treated water used for cooling uh, say used for cooling purposes and treatment scheme include say the waste water coming from the municipal uh, or the sewage water then it will be passing through screening then grit removal will be done uh, then extended aeration is given then chemical dosing plus flocculation so that all the sediment or the, the suspended solids will be removed then sand filtration is given then uh, zeolite it will be passed through zeolite so that a softening is done and plus acid correction and occasional chlorine shock loss are given and then this water is directly used for cooling purposes. Then another example is Rashtriya Chemical Fertilizers RC of Chembur, Mumbai. So, actually this plant was installed in 2000 for recycling about 23 million liters per day and the investment was about 400 million rupees. 
and uh, a complicated treatment process including reverse osmosis is uh, installed in, in the RCF plant. 2005 the operating cost was about rupees 39 per meter cube. Uh, with the su success of recycling scheme, uh, municipality also started to charge this wastewater. So, the wastewater they were RCF was taken from the municipal supply. Uh, the plant in uh, the RCF has the following flow sheets like wastewater will be taken from municipal supply, waste sewage, then it will be put through screening, then grid removal, then activated sludge system, clarifier, then sand filter, then pressure filter, then cartridge filter, then it will be passed through reverse osmosis and then a degasser to remove carbon dioxide. And finally, this is used in, in industry. So, that way RCF this last uh, uh, say 10, 15 years they are very effectively using this uh, municipal sewage water uh, waste water or the sewage for uh, their water supply uh, in the uh, RCF plant. So, now before closing the lecture let, let us look at the future of water recycling. So, water recycling has proven to be effective and successful in creating new and reliable water supply. Uh, then uh, non portable reuse is widely accepted and advances in wastewater treatment technology and health studies say maybe for portable purpose also we can use. Uh, recycling uh, wat waste and grey water requires less energy than treating salt water uh, like a desalination system and water recycling is a sustainable approach and can be cost effective in the long term and public be informed and involved in the planning processes. Uh, so, before closing today's lecture, so these are some of the references uh, used for today's lecture. Then few questions, tutorial questions, critically analyze and study the scope of water recycling in India, whether water recycling and reuse a solution for water scarcity in India, a study and compare various case studies available and evaluate the economics. Then uh, self evaluation questions illustrate water recycling and its importance what are the benefits of water recycling and uh, what are the different stages of wastewater treatment, illustrates various conventional ways of uh, treating the wastewater. Then a few assignment questions like discuss various uses of recycled water, describe various water management solutions, describe the various stages of uh, tertiary treatment methods, illustrate various modern ways of treating wastewater. So, today we are discussing about the, the uh, water recycling. So, we are discussing about the, the how we can use the waste water for various purposes and by giving appropriate treatments depending upon the waste water nature of the waste water we have to give appropriate treatments for the intended uh, use. So, in the last lecture in the next uh, lecture we will be discussing about the water reuse and further reclamation and further topics in this uh, module. Thank you. Thank you.